Hi, everyone, and welcome to AP Daily. My name is Tim Gallagher, and I'm an AP computer science teacher from Winter Springs High School just outside of beautiful Orlando, Florida. And today's topic is 3.5. This is compound Boolean expressions. And in today's video, the first of three, we will be introducing nested if statements. So what will we learn? Our learning objective is that we're going to be representing branching logical processes by using nested conditional statements. And those are basically just if statements within other if statements. Let's look at an example. So here I've got a program that I wrote called nested if tester. And it starts out, I have an integer called number that I initialize to 36. Then I've got a series of if statements. And in the first one, I check to see if number is greater than 20. It is. So then it goes inside the curly braces to my second if statement. And here I'm looking to see if number mod 6 equals 0. Basically, I'm checking to see if number is divisible by 6. It is. So it's going to go to this first print statement. And it's going to print out number is greater than 6 and divisible by 6. Great. So that's an if statement inside of another if statement. What if I change the number to 40? Well, same situation. I'm going to see, is my number greater than 20? It is. So I'm going to go inside again to the second if statement. But here, number 40 is not divisible by 6. So it's going to skip over this if and go to the else associated with it. And it's going to go to the print line and print out that number is greater than 6, but not, or number is greater than 20, but not divisible by 6. Again, looking at the if statement inside of the if statement. But now, what if I set number equal to 12? Well, here, when I go to the first if statement, is number greater than 20? It's not. So here, I'm going to skip over the curly braces and go right to the else, and it's going to print out that number is not greater than 20. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, but number is divisible by 6 because it's 12. And that's true. However, because the second if statement where I checked for that mod 6 is inside of the first if statement and the first if statement evaluated to false, I never get a chance to check for mod 6. And that's one of the rules when we have our nested if statements. If the first one is true, it evaluates the second one. But if the first one doesn't evaluate to true, you'll never get to the second if statement inside. And that's how our nested if statements work. One thing to be aware of, though, and that's the dangling else. So what's a dangling else? Well, here's another program. And this one says I've got an integer called a that I set equal to 20. And you'll notice the first if statement I have. Again, here's a pair of nested if statements. I'm looking to see if a is greater than 30. It's not. So where does it go? Well, it looks like, in this case, that it would immediately go to the else and print out a series of question marks, right? But does it? Because whose if statement does that else belong to? What if that else was tabbed over a little bit and it was underneath the other if statement? There's two ifs, but only one else. So does the else belong to the first if or the second if? Does the indentation matter? Because here's where it was. So could we say based on indentation? Well, no, because we know Java doesn't care about indentation. That's just for our readability purposes, right? So in this case, it's kind of confusing. Does it belong to the first if or the second if? Well, the answer is that the else always belongs to the closest if that doesn't have an else. So in this case, even though I had it tabbed over to line up with the first if, that else belongs to the second if. So when I run this code, since A is not greater than 30, nothing's going to get printed to the terminal window. However, what if I really want that else to go to the first if? Can I force it? We can. I can use curly braces. And this is why it's really important to use curly braces in your code. So now, because of these curly braces, I force the else to belong to the first if and not the second if. The second if just doesn't have an else now. So now when I run this code, I get a series of question marks. Because A is not greater than 30, it drops to the else and prints out all the question marks in there. So be careful about, nested, about the dangling else's when using a nested if statement. So let's try some practice on your own here. I've got a code segment. I've got two variables, age, and a Boolean variable called is late, and a series of if statements. Why don't we go ahead and pause the video here and evaluate what does this segment display? And when you're done, hit play again, and we'll go over the answer. All set? OK, here we go. So what does this print out? Well, it looks like it's going to print out line number two and line number four. 
Let's look at why. Well, age is equal to 16 and is laid as a Boolean that's set to false. So the first if statement asks if age is greater than 10. It is. So it's going to go inside to the second if statement. If is late. Well, is late is false. It's not true. So it's not going to print out line number one. But it is going to go to the else that belongs with the closest if and print out line number two. Then it's going to skip over this else because this else belongs to the first if, and we already evaluated that to be true. And it's going to skip over the print line for line number three, and it's going to print out line number four. And that's it. And that's how our nested else, our nested if statements work. So what should we take away from here? Well, as we mentioned, we discussed represented branching logical processes by using nested conditional statements. And those are basically if statements contained within other if statements. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching uh, AP Daily and for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Take care.